Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class with a very positive quote. The journey of a thousand miles begin with a small step. So guys, this is the lesson for all of you, which is going to be the small step for all of you. This video is the small step to clear uh, your RBI grade B, NABAT and SEBI examination. If you are targeting any of these examinations, then this video is the small step to cover the journey of thousand miles. Okay. So do watch the videos on our channel. Do prepare the current affairs and everything that is given in your syllabus diligently. On that note, let's begin today's class. Uh, this is our mobile application. Uh, I hope uh, you have downloaded it and these are the channels to which you can connect with us. One more thing, I have already uploaded the PDF of this session on the Telegram channel. So go to the channel, download the PDF and keep it beside you so that in case you are not able to understand anything or you feel the need to read something in the middle of the video as well, you can open the PDF. Okay. Or otherwise, you can use that PDF for your revision purpose. Okay. Channel. Let's begin with the first question. Where has the Prime Minister of India, that is Narendra Modi, launched the Jal Jal Abhiyan? So here, guys, the right answer is Sirohi. So Sirohi is a district in Rajasthan, and in, the, in that district, the Prime Minister has virtually inaugurated or rather launched this Jal Jal Abhiyan. Now, what is the Abhiyan and uh, why exactly is this location has been chosen? So, let's look into that. So, Prime Minister uh, will virtually inaugurate the Jal Jal Abhiyan at the Shanti one of Brahma Kumari's Sarthan. Okay, So, this is the organization with which the Ministry of Jal Shakti has partnered to uh, implement the Jal Jal Abhiyan. And from the name itself, Jal Jal Abhiyan. We can clearly decipher the intention of this or the objective of this campaign. That is to have people's contribution, people's participation in the conservation of water. Okay. Now, under the campaign, people associated with the Brahm Kumari Samhan and the Ministry of Jal Shakti will run a public awareness campaign for eight months to preserve more than 5,000 water bodies across the country and to build new water bodies. Okay. A target has been set to reach 10 crore people by organizing the 10,000 programs. So, by engaging more and more people, these water bodies will be conserved, new bodies will be created, and this is the basic objective of the Jal Jal Abhya. Okay, so that is it, nothing much is there. Now, this Therogi district is basically in Rajasthan and related to Rajasthan. And we have recently read that Rajasthan has also launched a relief inflation relief package. Okay, so that's the recent news related to Rajasthan, which all of you should be aware of. Okay, and uh, then in Rajasthan, we have Leonardo National Park, which was there in the news sometime back. Can any one of you tell me why was this uh, national park there in the news? the news related to the park. This is my question from all. Now related to the Cleolado National Park, I have already taught you in previous class as well, in some of the, uh, in class some days back, that this and Loktak Lake are mentioned in the Montreux Accord of the Ramsar Convention. Okay? And all the wetlands which are there in that accord are the uh, wetlands at the level of extinction or at the level of the complete damage. So they are very much threatened and this park needs to be saved okay so don't forget the answer of my question in the comment section okay i really appreciate the students who give the answers okay so question number two is what is the total budget allocation of the defense sector in the union budget okay so the right answer is would be 5.94 lakh crores there must be a question in your mind that budget was announced on 1st February, then why do we have the question out of budget right now? 
So do remember this thing that budget has no timing. Once it is released, then I assume that this is the Bible for all the students because from this Bible, you are going to have many questions in your examination. Like this one has a, however, it is not like that this question does not have any news associated with it. There is a particular news related to this, but understand this point guys that budget aapke liye bible hai ghot ke peena hai aapko budget and economic survey kisi bhi exam ke liye ho kisi bhi exam ke liye prepare kar ho is teen dono documents ko achche se prepare kar ho thik hai alongside your government skills okay so first of all the related to the announcement related to the budget was made during the aero india event and what was that announcement that i'm going to tell you a little later but first i want to give you the information related to the event okay so 14th edition of this aero india event will be held in bangalore basically it has been organized in bangalore and uh, the theme of this event was aerospace and defense technologies way forward it was the 14th edition of this aero india event and it is a biennial event it happens uh, once in two years then the center for airborne systems or caps which is a laboratory of dio and aeronautical society of india these two organizations have organized the aero india event then the along with the event the defense ministers conclave was also organized in bangalore now that is before going into the highlights of this event let me also tell you that india is doing a lot recently air india has placed world's largest flight order world's largest airplane order of 470 airplanes okay 250 will be bought from boeing uh i and the uh, 220 will be bought from air okay so this is one thing that india is doing uh, in its aircraft segment the second thing is that recently in bangalore we near bangalore uh, we had the uh, india's largest helicopter manufacturing facility now from here my question tells so can any one of you tell me the exact location where this hindustan aeronautics limited's largest helicopter manufacturing unit uh, located so this is your another question which you are going to answer me in the comment section below so these are some of the recent uh, recent and very important announcement related to india and its aero policy now let's move into the highlights of this so from this announcement came the question which we have just come so the defense minister rajnath singh has made this announcement or rather he has reiterated the statement which was already there in the budget that we have 5 lakh crore rupees of budget for the total defense sector and out of this 75% approximately 1 lakh crore would be spent on the uh, procurement from the uh, domestic industries okay so that is the major announcement which Raj, uh, rajnath singh made during the aero india event okay so 5.94 lakh crore has been allocated and it is 13.18% of the total budget then rupees 45.03 lakh crore is the total size of the budget for the year 2023 to 24 okay so do remember this budget size of the government for the coming year okay when i read this news guys there was a question in my mind that the government has the budget size but does the government have a balance sheet have you ever wondered on this question that does the government of india have a balance sheet so guys i googled a lot i researched on this so what i found is that the annual financial statements are released by the government by the ministry of finance on the website called indiabudget.government.in theek hai and in that website we have different kinds of documents like budget economic survey and annual financial statements in which the consolidated statement of funds and the consolidated expenditure the revenue account the capital receipts the revenue disbursements and the capital disbursements are mentioned so these are different documents which are given by the government as their balance sheet but like a company's balance sheet there is no specific one document which would state the asset and liabilities of the government 
ठीक है सो दैट इज वॉट आई फाउंड टूडे न्यू एंड आई वॉन्टेड टू डिसमिनेट दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड आई होप दैट यू हैव एन फाउंड इट इंटरेस्टिंग द बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ दी आई वुड से डॉक्यूमेंट ऑफ अकाउंट विच द गवर्नमेंट मेंटेन्स बट दैट इज नॉट द बैलेंस शीट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट इज बेसिकली द पेमेंट विच द गवर्नमेंट हैज टू मेड टू द आउटसाइड कंट्रीज और दिसीज ओके Now, capital outlay pertaining to the modernization and infrastructure development has been increased to one point six three lakh crores. So basically, uh, on the modernization uh, and infrastructure de development of the defence sector, this much amount will be spent by the government. One more important fact, which is the NDI in defence sector, which was increased to seventy four percent through automatic route. Earlier it was. Um, Uh, earlier it was a forty nine percent, then it was increased to seventy four percent, and hundred percent through the government. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that if the government approves any foreign company to set up its manufacturing unit here, so that manufacturing unit can completely be owned by the foreign company if the government has approved it. This is the meaning of it. Okay, and if it is automatic, it is through the automatic route. Then seventy five percent, sorry, seventy four percent of the company can be owned by the foreign uh, company and foreign investor, and the remaining must be owned by the Indian company or Indian investors. Next announcement or highlight during the Air India event is the MOU. So. Uh, Two sixty-six partnerships were uh, take uh, were happened, and two hundred one MOUs were signed. Fifty-three announcements were made. Nine product launches were there. Three transfer of technologies agreement was signed. So a total worth of all these partnerships is equivalent to eighty thousand crore rupees. Okay. So obviously you don't have to remember the numbers also. Okay? That how many MOUs were signed during the Air India event. This type of a question won't would not be asked from you in the examination. So you can skip it. However, this amount is important because this is showing the investment potential in the defence sector in India. So what you can do is you can just remember that. In the Aero India event, the partnership which took place, uh, they uh, the MOUs in the partnerships had a worth equivalent to rupees eighty thousand crores. Okay. Now let me just show you the technologies or the products which were launched during the Aero India event. Because from here you can expect a question. Okay. So first is vertically launched short range rockets to air missile by Bharat. Dynamics Limited. Second is SAR Seeker ATGM for BMP. Second by Bharat Dynamic Limited. Then Jishu by Bharat Dynamic Limited. Okay. Then uh, Goniometer by Bharat Electronics Limited. So these are the uh, these are the major products which were launched during the Aero India event. Other products were also there. But these are some of the major uh, products which I found interested, uh, interesting, and that that is why I have put it here. The next important highlight is the Suraj drone. Okay, so Garuda Space has unveiled the Suraj drone, which is a solar-powered unmanned intelligence surveillance reconnaissance aerial G glider. Drone. It was unveiled at the event. Okay, so do you remember Garuda Space? Uh, has developed the Suraj drone. Okay, so third question is how much is the seafood export target of India by 2025? So uh, here, very good is the right answer. I guess the right answer is not mentioned in the option. Yeah, it was not mentioned in the options. So let's look at the right answer here. The federal government has nearly doubled the seafood exports to 14 billion by 2025. And don't worry about the question. I will correct the options and provide you the right answer in the options. Okay. So the next uh, statement here is that the seafood exports were worth seven point seven six billion in FY twenty two, and now the amount has been almost doubled to fourteen uh, billion USD. And remember this point that this is the target of the government. Uh, we haven't achieved this export level as of yet, but we are achieving this much. Worth of export is also significant for India. 
Now guys, I hope all of you remember that we have PM Matasya Sambata Yojana. Okay, and the outlay of this is rupees 20,150 crore. It was launched as part of the Atmanabhar package and the basic idea of this is to give a boost and develop the fisheries sector of India. Now related to fisheries, we have recently read that WTO had released an agreement on the subsidies of fisheries. Okay, so I hope you are remembering what I have taught you just a day, just two or three days back. So this agreement on fisheries of subsidies uh, was uh, adopted by Switzerland and Switzerland became the first country to adopt this uh, agreement. Okay, so I hope you are revising all the facts. Now, my question from all of you is, you need to tell me that which ministry is operating or implementing this scheme, which is a really, really easy question for all of you. Question number four is, where is India's first solid waste to hydrogen plant set? So Pune is the factory. So at a cost of 450 crore rupees, India has set up its first waste to hydrogen plant. Okay? So from the waste, we are going to generate hydrogen. And this is going to complete the cycle because now we would not be able to generate uh, waste which uh, and now that waste will be used in the in creation of the well for any product. Like here we are using the waste to create the hydrogen. Okay. So this plant will be set up by the sustainability solution provider that is the Green Billions Limited and the Pune Municipal Corporation. Okay. Now one most important fact here is that we have already launched the National Hydrogen Mission. So what is the target of that mission? The target is to have at least 5 million metric tons of annual production of hydrogen and we can increase this capacity to 10 million metric tons in case of increasing exports. Okay, so when we start exporting hydrogen, we will definitely increase the uh, capacity of hydrogen production in India. So that is the basic idea of this uh, statement and this is the most important statement from the mission. Okay, so do remember this statement. And here guys, we have the components of the National Hydrogen Mission. So, component means what are the focus areas of the National Hydrogen Mission. So, first focus area is the demand creation. Okay, we are going to create the demand for hydrogen. How? Export market say, then substituting import, then domestic demands in multiple sectors so that we will be able to replace the fossil fuel generated electricity with the hydrogen generated electricity. Then incentivizing supply. How will the mission do that? By strategic intervention for the GH2 transition, uh, direct financial incentives for the electrolyzer manufacturing because we know that hydrogen extraction needs the electrolysis process and electrolysis is done by the use of electrolysis. Okay. And what is the process of electrolysis? I hope you know that H2O is the, is the formula of water and from water by using the electrolysis we separate the hydrogen and oxygen and extract Then green hydrogen production. Now for this electrolysis process we will use the green uh, renewable energy. Okay, So this is how we are planning to strategize the uh, supply side, incentivize the supply side. And the third component here is the key labors. Okay, how will we will be able to achieve this target by using our resources, financial renewable energy, banking and storage, transmission, land, water, re, uh, research and development, ease of doing business. We will improve on that uh, infrastructure and supply chain, regulation and standardization, and skill development and public awareness. Okay, so these are going to be the key enablers through which we are going to increase the demand and the supply of hydrogen. And remember, the particular focus is on green hydrogen. Okay? Now, one more thing. Now, this is completely off the topic and that is the ease of doing. Because as I saw the ease of doing here, so I reminded of the ranking. So, ease of doing business happens. Business ranking has been discontinued. And can anyone of you tell me that which organization releases the ease of doing business or used to release the ranking? 
and if you are telling me then also tell me that what was india's ranking in the last uh, ease of doing business uh, rankings last question is where was the global tech summit organized so here guys it was organized at vishakha the new capital of andhra pradesh do remember or uh, here andhra pradesh the vice uh, star jagan mohan reddy the cm of andhra pradesh planned to create three uh, capitals in the state on the taking inspiration from south africa and other countries which have three capitals like legislative kerala executive kerala and judiciary kerala but later on that plan was dismantled and now the entire capital has been shifted to vishakhapatnam that is the scenario now coming back to the news so global tech summit uh, is organized at this place vishakhapatnam and the nearly 1000 delegates from 25 countries participated not an important statement then fikki uh, hold uh, fikki held a session on the digital bharat for creating a new india driven by technology innovation and entrepreneurship again not a very important statement here but yes digital bharat ke baare mein baat ho rahi hai so i remember that there is the news uh i guess in the last month there was a news that there are seven countries approximately seven countries who are ready to take up indian stack what is india stack india stack basically means the digital uh, technologies which we have developed and which we are ready to export to other nations for example aapne padh suna hoga that we are now ready to give upi and rupee services to various countries and we are already uh, giving these services even us has also uh, come to india not come exactly physically come but us has also asked for the upi and rupee services in that issue so we are uh, doing very good on that front and not only rupee and upi uh, rupee and upi but we have other uh, digital technologies as well which are doing very well like arogya setu application is doing very well we had almost given the free and open access of the arogya setu application to our friendly nations so that they can also develop that uh, application according to their local needs and then they can do the vaccine need of uh, their nation so in this manner we are uh, leveraging on the digital revolution and uh, this india step is right now uh, basically the countries have right now shown interest in uh, in adopting these technologies but nothing significant has happened but since you are the aspirant so you should be aware of such news okay so guys here the session ends i hope you have enjoyed the content thank you so much for watching the session and in case you have any doubt query or anything to ask from me you can do so uh, in the comment section on the whatsapp channel or on our discussions.anatindal.info thank you so much guys for watching the meeting